Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the party. So, so, so happy to have you come on in. Whether you're watching live in the Zoom room, or if you are watching in the Facebook group, or if you're watching the replay, I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so thrilled and happy to have you here. Good morning, good morning. This has been such a powerful week in this extravaganza. I have been obsessed with everyone's presentation so far. There is so much wisdom and golden nuggets in every single one. So if you haven't been able to catch some of them, definitely go back and listen to the ones and listen to this. Listen to the ones that grab your attention. I know everyone's so full and so busy. Justin, I'm so glad you're here. I see you in the Facebook group. Um, I know everyone is so busy. And so the, you don't necessarily have to go through and listen to every single one, even though they're all amazing, but I would recommend listening to the one that like grabs your attention. If you feel the energy behind it, if you love the title of it, if there's something that grabs you, make sure you listen to that one. I am so thrilled to have our next guest speaker here. And just so you all know, in these sessions live and on the replay, when you engage, your name gets entered into a drawing. We are doing a giveaway. Um, and we do it based on people's engagement. <clears throat> so when you engage, we put your name in the drawing. And so on Monday, November 27th, we are doing a bonus call <clears throat> with me, with our guest speakers, where we'll be doing a giveaway. We have all kinds of things planned. It's going to be so magical and amazing. So whether you're watching this live on the replay, make sure you are dropping a comment that you're writing your biggest takeaway because that's going to get you entered into the drawing. Our next guest speaker is an absolutely phenomenal woman who has lived through some of the craziest things life could throw at a person, unexpected, big, hard, who, and yet she is so full of love and light and joy. And if there's anyone who knows how to transmute pain into your power, if there's anyone who knows how to help you turn your obstacles into opportunities, if there's anyone who can support you through that massive transformation, it's Janessa. So you guys are in for a treat. Janessa, I'm so excited to have you here. Please Come on up, unmute yourself, introduce yourself, and share your magic with us. Well, hello. I'm Janessa Finley Ford. I'm an empowerment coach and I'm a healer. And I guide leaders, healers, and high achievers to, like Nicole explained, to turn their obstacles into opportunities and rise to their next level self while being true to themselves, all while mastering the art of being human. So, really becoming the expert of you and knowing how to move through your rhythms, your life experience, and come out through any circumstance on the other side, stronger, more empowered, wiser, more wholesome, a truer version of who you are, and loving life in spite of <laughs> the cards you might be dealt, which are not always amazing. My personal story, I'm not going to get into really deep here since this is being um, shared into a meta platform. There's some reasons for that, but I will share that I went from supervising felons to marrying one. The story absolutely is not what you think it would be. And it has for sure been the hardest challenge, obstacle, trial of my entire life. And the craziest thing is, is when I look back on other past experiences, I actually believe that this has been easier to get through rather than harder, simply because of the tools that I have. What I'm going to share with you today, also what I use working with my clients, what I teach clients, it's, uh, it's such a, uh, what, what is the word, like oxymoron? oxymoron to say that your greatest trial is easier than past trials simply because I'm better equipped. And I do think that life brings us every experience that we need to get through the trials that we're faced with. And so I deeply believe that whatever you are navigating in your life, you're actually very well equ equipped to either navigate with the resources you've already obtained or be built to seek out the resources that you will need to help move you forward and move you through that. Um, so that's just a little bit of my philosophy about life in general. But I think that it's really important to, to just land this point about <clears throat> 
you know, we look at people and we might think that they have an easy life. We look at people who we see are doing life gracefully and we might write it off that they just don't have the hardships that we have or they don't have the challenges that we have. When the truth of the matter is every single person is universal law, but you're going to hit those bumps in the road. And it's not that someone has an easy life and they don't have the challenges in their life. It's that they live a lifestyle and have the tools to navigate those hardships that they make it look easy. And so what you see on the outside is not the reality of their inner reality. That makes sense. So that's kind of just my introduction. And where do you want to go from here, Nicole? Any specific questions? Do you want me just to share my principles and dive into that a little bit? First, I just have to say, you are just like dripping golden nuggets left and right. Like I'm trying, what I try to do when people speak is like capture their quotes and I'm just like capturing your whole speech just so you know in the chat I'm just like <laughs> oh my gosh everything she says is so profound um and so I just want to reiterate some of the things you said I loved when you said I help you become the expert of you um I, this is something I love about your work is you are so good at returning people back to their power um and that's so important because there's a lot of leaders and healers who say they have the power and what I love about you is you point people back to their own power and help them find their guidance, their, their knowing, their intuition, their body. Um, I loved when you said, you know, my current trials or some quote like this, your current trials are better than your past trials because you're better equipped. Um, and so I think like even just taking the time to acknowledge for each one of us, how much you have grown in your ability to handle hardship in your ability to navigate hard times. And hopefully you've gotten wiser and become better emotional intelligence. And like, I think we don't give ourselves enough credit. I think sometimes we can be just so angry at the frustrating curveballs that life throws you because it's not just one and they don't stop at a certain age, right? Like it's just part of the human experience. And so I loved when you said that it made me immediately start reflecting on how have I grown? How have I gotten better at this? And then I really loved when you um, hit this point, when you said they live a lifestyle and have the tools to navigate the hardships and make it look easy because it is so easy to think that everyone has it easier than us. And we have it so much harder and here's all the reasons why. And so what a beautiful reminder that we're all human. We go with all go, we all go through hard things. Um, and some people have more tools or utilize them more often to make it look easy on the outside, but it doesn't change the struggle that they're facing intimately and deeply and personally. So thank you so much for leading that way. Um, from there, just just keep speaking. I'm just going to keep grabbing your speech and translating it to written words. It's so good. Okay. Well, I will talk about my three main pillars. I like to break things down and keep things pretty easy for people. And also just showing up in such a tender vulnerability that has become my reality this year. If you guys knew what I've actually walked through this week alone, and I'm showing up here and showing up in my power, it would you would be mind blown to the testament of how real this work is. Um, I've had a family member with a terminal diagnosis, still brings up some emotion. And I got to see my husband for the first time in over 10 months. So this week has had all of the emotions from the highest of highs and the lowest of low. And that is just what life is about. Like like I said earlier, it's not that it's easy. It's that we embrace all that life has to offer, whether that makes us vulnerable and emotional. But you know what? It's better to feel than to be numb to everything. And that's a big difference between my current trial and my past trial. And what I feel isn't right or wrong. It's just what I feel. And it's here to help me. It's here to support me. And it makes life richer. I really love to talk about emotions. So my three simple steps, steps in, involve mindset, emotions, and then a clear spiritual connection. So we'll start with the emotions first. And I talk a lot in analogies because if we talk about the what I do, people don't really understand it. Nicole found this amazing quote, and I feel like it encapsulates my work so powerfully that you won't be able to understand it until you experience it. And even then you won't be able to explain it. And so 
without getting into the weeds of how I do the thing that I do with the energy that shifts your perception and your perspective and your reality within a matter of minutes, I just want to talk about the three main areas. So emotions, and I'm going to talk a lot in analogies so that you can connect the context around it. We really are built as humans to feel what we enjoy feeling. That's what we want in our heads. And so we move away from uncomfortable emotions. And we also, the more, you know, negative, and I'm talking about it from a polarized perspective. I'm not talking about it from negative. It makes you a bad person. It makes you be low vibe, like all these other contexts that society piles around negative emotions. I'm truly talking about it from a polarized place. The more that you can embrace the sadness, the the negatively polarized emotions in life, the more on the opposite end of the spectrum, you're also going to experience and feel. So you can have a very narrow spectrum of what you experience in life, or you can have really broad. And so I use the analogy of money. If you have money from every country, right? Like all of the emotions, not just a narrow spectrum, even if the country you're in doesn't let you spend it there, you're still richer, right? Because you have more money. It's just in a different uh, currency. Our emotions are the same way. And so when we try to move away from the discomfort and the uncomfortable emotions, we're actually narrowing our experience of life in totality. We're limiting how good things can be. And so the reality of our emotions is that it is the number one influence of the behaviors, what we choose to do. Because our natural innate desire is to move away from uncomfortable emotions, we're going to move into the things that make us feel good. That may be addictions, you know, coping strategies may not be positive. It could be food, alcohol, you know, the list goes on and on and on. For me, it used to be beating my body up with extreme exercise. Some people would say that exercise wouldn't be a negative coping strategy. Well, it is if your workouts are two to three hours and you're just absolutely putting your body through agony. So having the tools to process the emotions, to move you into a space of comfortable discomfort, because life, our expansion really happens outside of our comfort zone. Your goal should never be to sit where it's easy peasy and feels amazing because you're going to stagnate there. These are just like universal laws, right? And so we want to get comfortable with the discomfort and have the tools to bring us out of the pain back to the, you know, to a healthy balanced level of discomfort where we're growing and expanding and moving forward. Maybe doing the things that scare us a little bit, doing things that are new, figuring it out. So that is my riff on the emotions and why they're so important. They can't just be numbed out. They can't be ignored or denied. The second staple of my work is the mindset. So our brains are naturally programmed to look for lack, look for gap, where we haven't been, what we're not doing, our failures. And what a lot of people don't understand is that their brain is programmable. It's plastic, the neuroplasticity. You have the capacity to actually train your brain to work for you. And these are just aren't things that were taught in school, but they're very real. And so you are not uh, at the mercy of how your brain is designed. You have all of the ability to allow your brain to work for you and choose how you want your brain to operate. So training yourself to see the progress, the gain, the achievement, um, programming a mindset that, you know, like if you were in Nicole's world for very long, you hear her all the time talk about, if not this, then something better. You know, having all of those beliefs built in place that when your brain starts doing the thing it's programmed to do because you have a shock in life or you have this a circumstance on a rise that's unexpected, you don't sit in that lack and that gap for very long because you have the beliefs in place that you can catch yourself doing it. And you're like, oh, hey brain, this is what you do. 
but I don't want you to do this right now because it doesn't actually work for me. It doesn't benefit me. It's not going to get me to where I'm going. So let's rewrite the script. Actually, I know that I don't have to cling to that belief. And so the work that I do with people helps them to have the tools and the ability to reprogram their unconscious mind. I won't get really deep into this, but for those who are unfamiliar with the unconscious, it stores everything from your whole life through. So whatever the beliefs in your family, society, religion, and even in this current moment, your conscious mind can hold about five things, a handful of things. So you may see that I have curly hair and I have glasses and you hear some of the words that I'm saying, but your unconscious mind is storing the rest, whatever's going on in the background in your home or your workplace, <clears throat> the feelings and sensations in your body, your unconscious mind is just logging it away like a computer. It's just keeping all of that data in the background in a, a database. And then when you go to make a decision, your conscious mind is filtering everything about that decision through this database that's operating and running without your awareness to it to make the decision. So we think that our conscious mind is, you know, in control of our decision-making process when it actually has, depending on the research you look at, between five and 10%. The unconscious mind is doing the rest. And so we have to get into the unconscious, what we believe and what's stored in there and the experiences that we had in the past to be able to flip the script and write the story going forward that looks different than the past because that's the other thing our brain does is it recreates what it knows. And so whatever you experienced when you were younger is what your brain knows and your brain's gonna work really hard to make that happen again by default until we say, no, nope, buck stops here. Moving forward, my future looks like this, and I'm going to figure out how to make that happen, and I'm going to teach my brain how to work for me so that it does. So that's my concise nugget on mindset. And then the final pillar that I really work with with clients is having that really clean uh, connection to the spiritual. And this is really allowing yourself to trust your intuition and your inner guidance system right? Like just like GPS on your phone or in your car, it's going to give you a route, maybe the most gas efficient route to get to the destination, maybe the most time efficient route. Like you, you get a few options and you get to pick one, but then along the course, like life, right? You might see like, oh, hey, look at that exhibit. I don't know what that building is. I'm going to turn right here. And you completely trust the GPS to recalibrate and still get you to your destination. And that's exactly what your clear, clean connection with spirit, the inner spiritual aspect of yourself and your inner guidance system will do for you, but you have to trust it. You have to stop the rhetoric that I'm going the wrong way, I'm on the wrong path, questioning, second guessing, triple guessing, quadruple guessing. Am I actually right? What if there's no wrong or right, guys? What if no matter what direction you go, you're still going to get to your destination? If you trust your inner recalibrating, no matter what direction, turn, twist you take to continue on your path and let your inner guidance system recalibrate exactly like you do the GPS. They, unless you're the person that pulls over as soon as the GPS says, like whatever on the recalibration to re-enter your address and start all over. Like, I don't know too many people that do that, right? They just keep driving and they're like, the GPS is going to figure it out. And it's going to tell me where to take the next turn. We're built the same way. So those are my three pillars. Do we have any questions or? I mean, we have got a we have, yeah, mm, testify. I'm just like taking <laughs> us to church. I'll read people's comments, but I am like obsessed with this. I really loved when you said the brain recreates what it knows. And this is like why the subconscious is so powerful and important to rewire. Because if you're, if your brain is stuck on a certain way of knowing and doing things, it'll keep doing it the same way. And so we have the ability to not only mold our brain, but I love, love, love this truth. We said, what if no matter what direction you go, 
you always get to your destination because we have that inner GPS. This is freaking gold. Okay, let me read some people's comments here. <clears throat> um, let me scroll back. Let's see. Comfortable discomfort. Um, growth occurs at the edge. Love this. I have a writing coach who always tells us to get comfortable with discomfort. It is, it is okay for those feelings to be here. Um, when we, what we resist persists. So when we fight an emotion, we stay in the spiral. If we allow the emotion, we move through it, like going through a tunnel and coming out on the other side. Um, Austin wrote, that's why the mindset shift is so important. Um, yeah, people are just like eating it up and writing and responding. This is so good. <gasps> That's amazing, Sam. Sam wrote, the depth of what has been said has hit me on a whole different level, but in an amazing way. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely incredible. And I love these three pillars. And I, so I have a question with these three pillars. Can you expand on like, how does one use these three pillars in their life? Is it at different points in their life, they find themselves leaning more on one? Is it about learning to incorporate all three of them at the same time? Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I think that we naturally, especially in our personal growth process. So someone used the word spiral. And I love that because there is this spiral up that happens with our personal growth and vibration, like a lot of scientific stuff behind that. I'm not going to get into here, but say on one side of the spiral is a negative experience. And on the other side of the spiral is the positive. And so as you're moving up, you're going to experience that transition between enjoyable experiences and less enjoyable experiences. And when you start out at the bottom of this, the less enjoyable tends to be very emotionally driven, emotionally charged, and you spend more time in that emotional space. So it's a little bit of and both, right? We live this and both lifestyle. So it's a little bit of, yeah, you're using it all the time. It's a lifestyle. What's my mind thinking? Holding that self-inquiry. What am I feeling? What does that feeling have to offer me? Because our emotions always show up with good intentions, even if it's something that is uncomfortable to feel. But then it's also as you move through the stages of your development, at one point in time, you may be really emotionally focused. Then you'll move to, it goes actually emotions, thoughts, and then uh, more spiritual. So as you move up through that, you you might notice also having a phase or cycle in life where you're really in your emotional development, and then you're really in your thought healing development, and then you're more in the spiritual, uh, whether karma is the thing that, you know, resonates with you or soul contracts or like whatever your belief system is that would encapture the spiritual development. There are those three phases through the personal healing development journey as well. But because we're all interconnected, we don't have an emotion without a thought, without spiritual connection either. And so that's why it's absolutely a lifestyle. It's an everyday, it's an all experience and opening yourself up to embracing all of that as well. Like I spiritual side of me that our society largely tries to program, maybe you would say manipulate or build constructs around Austin's word of const and Shelley constructs, build con specific things that they want you to believe about that versus what is your spiritual connection, you know, and that that's different. You don't need to go to a church specifically to have a spiritual connection. You're not only within your spiritual essence on Sundays. Like this is part of our embodiment 24 seven. So hopefully that adds a little bit of clarity, but definitely that end both that you're going to be in a phase, but yes, you're also going to have emotions, thoughts, and spiritual essence every single day because you're human. That's part of being human. I love that. And I love like the freedom it gives you that it, it gets to be part of your lifestyle. This isn't something like you have to be religious about or like, which is fine if you're more methodical and it's like, okay, these days of the week, I'm going to work on my emotions. These days of the week, I'm working on my thoughts. Like that's all fine. But I like the in both mentality of 
there's going to be certain times life where we are really focused on one thing, but throughout the life, our life, we're going to be using all three pillars and leaning on them and incorporating them and being aware of them. So thank you for that expounding. Keep going. Yeah, just, you're so good. This is so good. That for the people who want to be super methodical, the reality of how humans work is that a thought precedes an emotion. And so we have a thought, even if but we have thinkers and feelers, right? So you might think, 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 and not actually feel in your body the emotion that your thought elicits. Then on the other side, the feelers, you'll notice the feeling. I feel anxious. I feel upset. I feel uh, anxiety. I feel anger. I feel resentment. I feel bitter. You might notice the feeling and you have to stop yourself and ask, what was I thinking? What was I thinking about? How did I get here? So it's not intuitive. And this is another thing I really support people with understanding how are they, how are they wired? And then opening to thinking, feeling, and our intuition. So spiritual, the feeling, emotions, the thinking, and the thoughts to balance it all out. So I believe that there are three intelligence centers in the body, the brain, the heart, and the gut. And so instead of relying upon one specific intelligence centers, a center, I help people open to all three. So they have all of the wisdom, all of our intelligence centers have to offer us to guide us through everyday life and every decision that we make. And of course, there is spiritual energy that affects the way we think, which affects the way we feel, because there's a thought before the feeling always. So that's for the methodical ones out there is how the flow chart <laughs> of spiritual essence, thoughts, and emotions would flow. And I really just like above all else, we only get one chance at life, right? We only get one opportunity to make this the most enjoyable, amazing experience. And so if you can feel good going through life, even through the challenges, isn't that better than having everything that's ideal in your world while feeling like you're still empty and unfulfilled? And that's what this inner development work is really, really, really about is being in a place where there's beauty in the hardship versus devastation and disappointment. And I'm not saying that you're not going to feel that for some time while going through it, but you're going to see all of the opportunities that came because of that. I would give... <laughs> I don't, I don't even know how to express this, but if I had to, if I had the ability to not go through the hardships I've been experiencing for the last two years, to have an ideal life and to have like everything that I dreamed of having while feeling empty and unfulfilled inside, I would walk back through these hardships a thousand times over to have the inner fulfillment and to know that I have my power and to know that I have been true to me unwaveringly. And that is what this personal development journey is all about. It's like win-win because you get to love yourself and be exactly who you are made to be. Unlearning all of the crap from your unconscious, from your childhood, and then still turning life into this amazing ideal ideal. I use that word not too uh, definitively or by the book. I'm like, uh, I'm like fighting back emotions right now by that last thing you just said that like really landed. Um, I know what you've been through in the past year and to hear you say those words that I would choose to do this again over having the dream life, but feeling empty that would not land the same with me if someone who's not been through what you've been through said that. Like, I would choose this life again. Like, that's easy for someone who has not walked what you've walked, but knowing what you've walked through. Wow. Like that, that is huge. And that is a testament to you as a person, as a leader, as a healer, to this inner work that you teach that you embody so well. And so like, when I think of like a mentor for someone, I'm like, Janessa is it. 
Like if you want to know how to navigate the crazy shit storms of life and somehow come on the other side as this gracious, strong, tender, intuitive person like Janessa and say the, say in the middle of it and on the other side of it, I would still choose that again because I, I found my power. I stayed on my two feet. I returned to who I really am. Like this is the person. So I just had to let you know that like that landed, it landed people in the, the chat. Um, Austin wrote, wow, stronger, do it again. Um, that's the grace, gratitude and gift concept. Wow. Wow. Yeah, your emotions make me emotional too. Um, I will share, I'll post separately if that's okay. And I'll share the links for people who want to read my story to where I have shared that publicly because it's not a secret by any means. I'm just selective of what platforms I get into it on. So that's available to anyone who wants a inspirational story to yes, let them know I, they can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. And I think um, for everyone who's watching now live and on the replay, Janessa's story is quite um, un unbelievable um, and yet real. And so thank you for um, pointing people where they can find more about your story. So I do want to do a live demo of the work that I do here. But there's one last thing I want to say before we get into that is that I feel as though there's really a narrative out there regarding healing and trauma healing and going through that personal development process that it has to be messy and it has to be hard and it has to be painful and it has to be dragged out and it lasts forever and it's ongoing. And like I've already established, it's a lifestyle. It's not an event. But what I hope to demonstrate so beautifully here today is how easy and gentle and gracious while also being life-changing that it is, that it is the way to create miracles for yourself every single day, in addition to what the universe so generously wants to shower upon you. So. And this is what I love about your work, Janessa, because she and I have talked about this before, you guys, about it's very easy to feel intimidated by and overwhelmed with the idea of reprogramming our brain and doing the inner work and transforming our, our lives from the inside out. And especially when you're dealing with trauma and pain, it's like, I don't want to go there. I don't want to touch that. It's too hard. It's too heavy. It's I'm going to drown in it. And something I love about Janessa's work is exactly what she said is like when she does like a healing session, it's, it's an amazing demonstration of how easy, gentle, gracious, and life-changing it can be. So thank you, Janessa, for offering that. Cause I just think there is such a hunger for that version of it. And I love that this is something you offer. Yeah. Well, I am gracious for Carlene, who has willingly volunteered to be our demo here today. And I want to state for anyone watching live on replay, I know Carlene through Nicole's community, but I really don't know Carlene well. And I also deliberately did not watch her session this week because I wanted to come in here and just truly follow the energy like I would be for any client that I'm supporting. So I really look forward to learning more about you, Carlene, this weekend when I go back and watch your session on replay. Um, but you're going to see a very organic representation of the work that I do with not having a lot of context or background of what Carlene has experienced prior to the past year, I would say. I think we have been in a similar sphere for approximately a year. So just some background for people who are watching to know the context of what they will see and experience. So with my work, we always pick an intention of an area that we want to focus on. So Carlene, what intention would you like to place your focus in a place where you feel like you want to take your good to great or you're having a trial and you really want to transmute that into trial? Thank you for allowing me to be the demo person. And I have been focusing on, I learned, uh, I was reminded of or giving more, given more context around intentions this week. And I have set the intention this week that I will, no, I've set three intentions. 
Uh, and the first is just do it. As I go through my days, instead of putting things off and finding and not finding, but letting things stop me, when there's something I feel called to do, just take a few minutes or an hour or whatever amount of time it is um, when all, whenever possible and just do it. And I specifically am challenged with just doing it in the midst of pain. Um, I did not share this on the interview that Nicole did with me earlier this week, but I live in constant pain, like so many Americans, like so many people in the world, 24-7, um, except for when I'm sleeping, and sometimes it wakes me when I sleep, I live in constant pain. I was, I've been in a few car accidents and have had all the discs of my neck herniate and three discs in my lower back. And I have learned lots of tools to mitigate through that pain. And I actually went off camera to do some stretching because I'm using my magnesium oil because my neck is spasming right now. Um, so finding ways to shift my energy around so that I can, when there's, I certainly do lots of self-care, um, took a nice luxurious nap uh, mid-morning. And uh, sometimes, you know, understanding the balance between when I do need to push through and do it and understanding when my body needs to take a nap. So um, that allowed me to be more present. And uh, the fact that I'm spasming even with the nap tells me that my energy is off. So being able to just do it through the pain, whatever the it is. Yep. Okay. So first of all, to get started and throughout this work, I should have told you, I don't, do you have water near you? You yes, may, you, you okay, did perfect. tell me multiple times. So I got my 32 ounce are full. Well, it perfect. was full when we started. You may want to drink while we do this. And at any time, just, it helps the energy move. And then I will also prompt you to breathe on occasion. This will be one of those occasions. We're just going to start by connecting your energy systems. <laughs> so take some deep cleansing breaths. You're going to balance all of your energy systems and get them optimized for your function. Now, the other cool thing about energy is it's contagious, right? Like you walk in a room, someone might not even say a word and you know that there's something not quite right with them or they're angry, whatever. So if you're watching, whether live or on replay, because energy knows no time, if any of these energetic threads that we work with Carlene today are relevant to you, you can take those intentional breaths and receive all of this goodness as well as you follow along. And then we're just gonna clear the energy so that you can be open, allowing, receiving, capable, worthy, deserving, safe, just to be in that place to receive really pure divine energy oh. to be able to fully in integrate the work to fully support you. Clearing things as a way to clear energy. <laughs> yes, that too, it's very real. Okay, so from a personality standpoint, I work with you know, thoughts and feelings, but there's a lot within the personality <laughs> that uh, maps out the feelings and the thoughts for us. So. Does this sound accurate of you that you enjoy a very peaceful life? You're very objective. You can see two sides to a situation easily. No, not like you at all. The, all but the last one. My life is not very peaceful, um, but there's a lot I enjoy. Uh, and I often can see multiple sides of the story. And I've learned, I've, I've built up my compassion muscles. Yeah. So I'm not talking about what life is. I'm talking about what you desire within. So oh, oh, wanting yes. that all I peaceful, want. like above all else, just having peace, not having conflict. Yes. So with that personality structure that you have, there's two inner stories that you live in. And I like to talk about stories. Like we're just a character, right? It keeps us out of the pain, talk about it not being painful and hard and arduous. This is part of that process is just looking at it like, hey, it's a story. I'm watching a movie. And at any time I can play a different character in that story. 
So there's a story around initiative that getting started to do things is challenging. But once you're started, then it goes really, really easily and smooth. But it's that first initial step. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of personality structure around that that creates that hurdle for you. So we're going to shift that here today. And then the other story that's really potent for you with what you're talking about with getting into that just do it energy is the perception of yourself as being lazy if you're not doing the things. So there's like this inner sloth dynamic that from a personality standpoint was programmed onto your soul at the time of conception. And that's from the energy that I'm working with. So you may or may not consciously really connect with that because it's at a deeper level than the mind, but we're going to transform the energy around that, which will lighten your path of just stepping and doing. So in order to do that, <laughs> super simple, you're just going to breathe. I'm going to do some integrations through your energy system and you're going to shift all of the energetics from every place this comes from, mom's side, dad's side, ancestral, hereditary, all of the life experience before now. Yeah. And all of the energy on your soul that you've been carrying that prompts you to live in this. So while you're breathing, I'm just going to explain to you and others, but you can just breathe and do your thing with the energy that this work with personality, I view it as computer programming, which I kind of talked about already an analogy of, and nobody uses an Apple iPhone anymore. And that's for good reason, right? It's outdated. Our personality structure is much the same. Like we get our personality at time of conception and then we're 30 years, 40 years, 50 years into life, still using the same programming when we like our technical devices have evolved. And so we're going to let this programming within you catch up to your evolution current day so that it supports your divine path going forward. Okay. <laughs> Good work. And I'm just tuning into the energy to see where we're going next. So you can just take a beat for a second. We're going to do some work on your timeline. And there's something at age eight that makes the energy go weak and stay weak. Does any memory pop up from you from around eight it's years old? mother long? who I loved as much as my birth mother died. Okay. And how did that impact the ability to do the things through pain? Was the pain overwhelming for you at that young, tender age? I was, yeah, I was numb. Yeah. I was traumatized. Even now at my age now, it still hurts. Of course. So go ahead and breathe through that. And we're going to release the lost trauma that you experienced at that time and not having the tools to move through that. If I could figure out a way to move past to let go of that trauma, my life would be so different now. I mean, I'd be able to move past things so mm -hmm. differently. So I just want you to think about that young, sweet, tender, eight-year-old little girl and the shock and fear that she mm -hmm. thought about in that moment. I'm just going to continue to do integrations and you can breathe and we're going to at least release that trauma from that time for you. The trauma was so poignant because it reaffirmed the trauma that I experienced earlier about being worthless, not worthy of having a mother. It confirmed yep. it. Yep. And that's exactly what we talked about, right? Like our brain recreates what we know. So then our life experience match that. We say, yep, here's the evidence. Here's the physical proof. This is what I've always known. But we have to start with releasing the shock and fear of finding out that that loved one passed from you. Just take some deep breaths and not knowing how are we going to move forward? How are we going to move on? She fell down room. the stairs. She went to the hospital. She never came. Yeah, and that's so scary for a little young child of how 
fragile and pivotal life is. Like you can just flip on a dime. I remember the song Kung Fu Fighting was new then. And my brother was dancing and jumping around to the song and I yelled at him, stop playing because I knew it was bad. And that was when my father came home to tell us, our father came home to tell her that she tell us that she wasn't coming home. Her nickname was Angel. Angel wasn't coming home. <laughs> so as you process this and breathe, I'm gonna also have you hold the front and back of your head. And I know that sounds silly, but it helps the processing of the brain, the emotions and the memories. We're just letting go of the sadness and sorrow. You're just going to feel this come up in kind of waves and layers. And as you continue to breathe, it'll release. And we're shifting any of the generational energy too of having these past, not past, having traumatic hardships like this occur within your family lines. <laughs> And then the next layer that you probably will notice is hurt and pain. So the sadness and sorrow and the hurt. And just keep breathing and releasing. And then we want to set that little eight-year-old free of thinking that it was her fault because when we're that young, we don't have the brain development that we need to know that life circumstances don't happen because of us. And so it wasn't little Carlene's fault that this happened. There is nothing you could have done differently. There was a grander design at play. I feel so bad for yelling at my brother still. <laughs> you feel bad for your brother still? Is that what you said? For yelling at my brother. Because oh. I know that it was his way of dealing with the pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's just forgive you for that because it was also your way of dealing with the pain. Thank and you God. both were just doing what you knew how to do at that time. And once you're done here today, you know, you can sit with, do you, and maybe I feel like knowing you, you've probably already reached out to him to literally ask for forgiveness, but that may be something that you may want to have a conversation with that would set you free. He's passed on, but oh, okay. I know he's listening. Yeah, for sure. He checks in on us sometimes. Mm -hmm. So really just forgiving yourself. And then also as a child, that fear of who will take care of me now, what are, what's this going to look like? So we want to release that. And the volatility that people leave or you can't trust them or you can't trust life to bring you people who are going to stay in your life and by your side. Oh, you know, that's my MO. I'm doing my damn self because nobody else is going to. Right. And a lot of that could stem from this situation here. So opening yourself, removing that old story. I'm so when people sorry. leave me. Who can take care of me? I just have to do it myself. Thank you. Thank you. And then as we keep going through the layers, the powerlessness and helplessness, we're going to release that feeling like you have no control. How do I feel like I have no control when I don't feel like I have control? 
Well, I think control is an interesting paradox where if we're really believing in the, the universe or the divine that we're exactly on our right path, we don't actually need control over anything because we're just walking our path. But we want control because it creates safety for us. That's good. That makes so much sense on so many levels. Yeah. Control is a construct, isn't it? It the is. The concept of control. Yeah, it's an illusion of safety, of protection, of a lot of things. But if you're following your nudges and your intuition, you're walking your path, you're walking your course, there's nothing to control because you're receiving your guidance from that inner inner guidance system, inner knowing. I feel like my brother and my sister both have passed. I feel like they're here. I love that. I'm you. inviting my father and my mother and my mother, both mothers, to come here and see me and know mm -hmm. me and love me. And know that I'm forgiving them and thanking them for forgiving me. And receiving the worthiness that's always been yours, right? Rewrite that story that you said earlier. It it affirmed for you that you weren't worthy. Yeah. I'm sure that they will all show you in their spiritual form that you've always been worthy. By being here, they show me. By putting their hands on my shoulders. Mm -hmm, I love that. By standing behind me and around me. <laughs> And the next layer we're going to release is the feeling of emptiness as you have your family support there to release this and let go of the pain and the hurt and the grief and the loss. They've been waiting for me to do this. Mm -hmm. You're doing such a great job. Such My a great sister job. Amy, she comes and checks on me sometimes. My brother Junior, he used to come and check a long time and he hasn't been around. Yeah, we always have support from the other side and from family. They never leave us, even though physically they do, but... I heard a, uh, I was exposed to a concept not long ago around those who live in the other pain, they know everything already. They see, they right? They're, they're in this place of everything's set. They know what's happening. They look on us as like they're, I don't want to say it flippantly, but they're entertainment or they're not entertainment, but just like, they look on us just with wonder and with the, and just that curiosity because they don't know exactly what we're gonna do. It was right. it was an interesting construct. Yeah, because of the free will, right? We can choose to do whatever we want to do, or we can choose to go within the inner guidance that we receive. So there is always that layer of mystery around everything. So it's a, it actually has helped me step back from it a little bit, have that awareness. So the next thing, and it might actually be the last thing of the layer of this trauma is discerning what limiting identity did you take on because of that death at age eight? So you assign something negative to yourself as a result of losing. What is that story? So we can release I don't deserve that. Love. Don't deserve love. I don't deserve depend on to depend on others. And I've been working so hard to reteach that to myself, to reparent myself, and to ask for help and to know that help is there. But still, that still small voice in me kind of I've been my self-talk is 
look at and Nicole often has reminded me and taught me, look at the evidence around. Mm -hmm. But a lot of my self-talk is you are succeeding. Like my, my reteaching, because that inner voice goes, you're worthless. You don't deserve. You're failing. You're gonna fail. You're failing. Yeah. So we're just letting that little eight-year-old release that story so that grown you can also release the story. And we're reclaiming any parts and pieces our psyche can fragment during times of trauma. So we're also going to integrate and bring back to you all of your full essence that may have fragmented at that time, the parts of you that said, this is just too dangerous. We're going to check out, but then you just carry that energy within your, your energy field it never actually goes away, but it gets triggered when our trauma gets triggered and acts out. And that's the arrested development paradigm. That is the human condition. It's all trauma driven. No, I don't know if I can. I'm so tired. What if you didn't have to do any of it? What if you just let your family do it? That's there supporting you spiritually. What if you just put down that burden and said, I'm here to that. receive? Yeah, because that's the whole paradigm we're working with, right? Like I'm undeserving of support. I can't receive. Like, this is your opportunity just to say, I don't have to do it anymore. I'm just totally open to the divine and just take it. Hey, yeah, come back, y'all. I hope you. <laughs> yeah. Because as soon as I said that, and as soon as you said that, I did feel my family retract. Mm. Yeah, just let them come in and give them the help that you've always deserved just receive just take a couple really really deep breaths Angels hugging me now. Oh, beautiful. I don't remember her ever hugging me after death. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready for my birth mother to hug me though yet. Though. That's okay. That's all I'm a healing process. <laughs> I got to forgive her some more and I'm just, just not ready. But you have the tools to do that. You just walked yourself through Ho'oponopono, oh, 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 so you know the way. And that's all that matters is just knowing the way. So when you want to choose to allow that to happen, you can do it. that at another time i forgive myself for not being ready now yeah i love you carlene you're okay not being ready angel i miss you thank you for being here carlene even though you're here i thank you for being here even though i'm not ready i thank you for being here well, it's also not the focus, Carlene. Like we're working what happened at age eight with your stepmom. And that's, an, you know, another thing that can come up is it brings up other memories from the past, but that's not the focus and that's not the, the priority, the intention. And so there's no reason to force more Thank or to feel bad that it's not a part of the current moment's journey. We just honor I'm what an is. angel right now. Yep. Thank you for inviting me. My birther mother's name is Carlene. So that's why I said that. 
Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm a junior. Angel's name was Sandra Search, and we called her Angel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Telling me I'm okay. She's telling me the same thing. Telling me I did okay. I'm doing okay. You are okay. Absolutely. I'm okay. <laughs> And y'all don't leave. Stay around. Stay around. It's okay to watch me. I'm okay. I still need you all. Though. I don't need you, baby. And the very last integration I'm going to run is just to clear all of the places in your mind, especially your physical body. We hold trauma within our tissue, within the physical body. My lungs. Yeah. So just letting all of that out wherever the imprint of this trauma has been stored in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. There's no need to carry any of that forward anymore. So just giving your body, your mind, and your spirit the ability to also fully accept the healing and remove any last remnants. <laughs> And filling that space that we created back with light and love and truth and harmony and peace and gratitude and joy. Yeah, Nicole just posted harmony in the body, in the tissues, in the joints, and all around. Absolutely. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as you settle into that, into that space, do a final check-in. Is there anything that feels like it's lingering remaining? Or do you feel like you've reached completion energy? Well, honey, there's a lot of stuff lately, <laughs> but keeping in mind what you said around my eight-year-old self, mm -hmm. I have more now than what I had before, before our session. Yeah, perfect. And this is just a demo, so it's not even, we don't have enough space or time here to even do a full entire session to work on some of the other pieces that may be tied into the just doing it energy but you did an amazing fantastic job and i think that this is going to create a beautiful shift for you going forward and i do living feel some a new dynamics I, so, I do feel a lighter okay. thank you yeah so you may notice over the next few days this will continue to integrate and shift you may have more realizations <laughs> revelations, learnings, or what I like to call new truths, truer truths about yourself, life, your family, all of that. So just observe and acknowledge and continue to, you know, drink, drink the water, be gentle with your body as you are, and just moving through that healing process. Yes, Do you do you have any questions? I'm not a doctor, my love. But do you have any questions? <laughs> to me, you're a doctor. You just worked on me. <laughs> you know, back in the day, doctors were not people with pieces of paper. Nope, they were not. They were people, they were more often women who healed souls. Yep. So thank you for you're so helping, very, me, very welcome. helping me with some of my healing. Yes, thank women you. of medicine. Thank you for sharing yourself so vulnerably on here is and brave. 
After this, I'm going to go take a walk and get in nature. And take my water with me refill. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that'll be really good for your soul too. And for the process of releasing. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that is our demonstration here today of how we move through some trauma and set ourselves free from that stuff we carry from such a young age and be able to release the grief. Like, you know, grief is a process, but it's, it doesn't have to be something that is carried with us for the rest of our lives. We lose family members and loved ones. And sometimes we just don't have the means to move through the grief. And so it creates the illusion that it is permanent when it is not. Wow. That was so sacred to bear witness to. Thank you, Carlene. Thank you to your beautiful family for being there and around you. I feel them. Oh, thank you, Janessa for sharing your medicine with her and Carlene for being open to receiving there. That was wow. I'm like speechless. And like Janessa said, this is just a small taste of what's possible. What's available. It's not even a full session. So I just want to ask you, Janessa, mm -hmm. is there any last thing you would like to share with us. And then also I'd love if you could share if there's any way for pe if people are interested in working with you or learning more about your services, can you share a little bit or tell them where they can find that? I don't have a whole lot left to say other than the fear that so naturally comes up in doing something new. And so oftentimes the fear will hold us back from taking that step of investing in ourselves or diving into something from the past because it may bring the pain up to move through it, to transcend it, to transmute it. And fear, I, I really, from a spiritual aspect, love to look at the energetics of the spiritual in the polarization of expression or suppression. And fear suppresses your truest self. It's not actually the energy that we were created divinely to live in. And so anytime fear comes up for you, you automatically know that whatever it's connected or attached to is not your truth. And if the fear limits you or stops you from moving forward, it's a suppression of your fullest, truest form. And so I just invite people to really lean into the fear that they um, experience. And I'm not saying be a reckless abandon and throw all caution to the wind. And like, I'm going to jump off the cliff because I have fear. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Right. But if you're nudged to invest in yourself, to heal something from years and years and years ago, or to hold a state of just seeing what the possibilities are, wherever you are in your journey, just honor yourself in that way. And don't let the fear stop you. But that's the most common, common thing we experience is the fear. And then we pump the brakes. But what would it look like to feel the fear and lean in to honor yourself? So where you can find me, um, fiercely radiant soul. I actually have two businesses, but my website is www.fiercelyradiantsoul. You can find me there. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram fiercely radiant soul. Instagram is fiercely underscore radiant underscore soul. <laughs> and then I also have group coaching and I work with an incredible colleague who has many different tools than I do. So you get the mindset. I also do functional medicine, which I didn't talk about at all here today and energy psychology. And my colleague does shamanic healing. Um, Oh my gosh, crystal healing, drawing a blank and earth medicine. So you get all of that in one space, all of the tools to learn that there's a whole bunch of courses, but there are all the tools around the mind, the emotions and the spirit so that you're equipped in between calls and sessions to do daily life in this lifestyle. And you're not floundering to figure it out. 
And then there's also live healing calls and live coaching calls. And that's within the Stronger Together community. So that's the one other place you can find me on Facebook is in our free Facebook group for um, Stronger Together. And you can work with me in a group setting or one-on-one. -on -one. I have all kinds of offers to really meet anyone at any place in their journey and walk in life. So feel free to reach out, um, DMs, you know, however is easiest for you, let it be easy. Reach out to me however it feels aligned for you. Thank you so, 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 so much um, for all that you are, all that you do, all the ways you offer support to people, meeting people exactly where they are and taking them where they want to go. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you everyone for being here and holding space for Carlene and Janessa as they did that work of sacred medicine and healing and releasing. That was a beautiful gift to all of us. And I know like I've seen comments that people are feeling emotional and they feel shifts happening within themselves. So Carlene, you just gave all of us a gift um, by being up there today. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you, Janessa. And again, if any, if any of you have questions, feel free to reach out to her in any way. This was absolutely phenomenal. My heart is so full. Um, I just want to let you guys know of our next session coming up, which will be on uh, Tuesday, November 21st at 12 p.m. Pacific time. That is our final session of the speakers. And then we have our bonus session on Monday, the 27th. But join us Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, November 21st to see our last but not least amazing speaker. I love you all. Go have an amazing day, an amazing weekend, being free, have fun at home, and lean into your fear. Bye, everyone.